Okay, let's look at a case of cantilever beam with a concentrated load at its end. Let's use the same methodology that we had the sections to apply to this. First of all, the moment that you see the fixed support, the first step was to calculate the reactions. Over here, if I call this A and I call this point B, there is an RAY, there is an RAX, and there is a moment. Let's say RAM. Mm -hmm. Using the equations of equilibrium, let's say this side, I can conclude that RAX is equal to zero. I can conclude that RAY is equal to P. And I can conclude that if I take the moment along point A, where majority of my unknowns are, and I consider this direction as positive, will be this times its distance equals to RAM. So RAM equals to negative PL. P times its distance equals to this guy. And why is it negative? It makes sense. This force is pushing this beam downward. So the reaction should not help it. The reaction should be the other way around, pushing it upward. If you want, you can change it. If you don't want, you can keep with the same value. So this was the reactions. What was the next step? Was simply starting from the left side, going along the length of the beam, and cutting a section and considering a segment. In this case, I'm cutting the segment over here, one micron before L finishes. Let's bring that out and concentrate on it. So if this is my beam, I'm taking such a thing out. I have the RAY, which is equal to P. I have RAX, which is equal to zero, so I can ignore it. And I have RMA, or AM, whatever. Instead of like this, it's negative. So I put it the other way around. I draw it like this, why not? And I say MA is equal to positive PL. This RMA is equal to positive PA because I changed the sign. If it gets confusing, keep the same sign and say negative PL. Now let's get back to the segment. I said a micron before L. So the length of this segment will be X. It's not L anymore, it's a tiny bit smaller. The next step was to put the, the shear and the moment functions. We said this is a convention, it's a standard, that whenever we have such a thing, a shear in this direction, a shear in this direction, a moment in this direction, and a moment in this direction will be considered positive. I'm looking at the right side, I put the positive moments, V of X and M of X. Shear function for the X length, moment function for the X length. And simply after this, I had a kind of a free body diagram. I just have to calculate all the forces which are unknown. So summation of all forces in Y direction going upward positive. From this, I can conclude that this guy is equal to this guy. There's no other thing. So function of shear is equal to P. One coming down, one going up. So this function equals to this. Let's give it some values. If x equals to zero, my function will be zero. My shear function will be zero. If x equals to L, because I'm cutting it a micron before the finish of L, so I can put L in it as well. Really doesn't matter this side of the segment or the other side. 
my function of shear will still be p sorry over here is not zero is p this is a constant value whatever value you put instead of x you will get the same value p p done let's say summation of moments is equal to zero for equilibrium and let's take a point we always were taking the point here let's call it o i'll call it o what happens there is a force here which has a distance to here and if i follow the arrow along uh, with the center of o you can see that is clockwise you see i'm talking about this p goes up with the center of o so it's positive p times its distance on the other side i have a moment here which i have to bring it in the equation but you see it's against the direction that i have considered so it will be a negative and what's the value pl if you remember initially i considered this as clockwise and i the actual value was negative pl so even if you didn't change this and you bring it in this equation it will be a positive negative pl so it will be the same thing anything else yes i have an mx here as well which is against my direction so it will be negative mx equals to zero i'll take that negative mx to the other side so mx so this was the function of my shear this will be the function of my moment let's put the same x's over there as well so if x equals to zero my mx will become this will be zero negative pl if x equals to l my moment will become pl minus pl will become zero So far so good let's draw the bending moment diagram and shear bending uh, diagram just having these values i just draw one curve i call this the shear diagram and let's say it's vx and this is the length and this is x let's say this is the point of l and i draw another diagram as well Let's say this is the length in terms of x there is no unit so i won't put any unit but this is the l this time i'm not drawing the beam anymore i'm speeding up this is the moment diagram and this is mx mx can i get the values from here yes for shear it says if x is zero meaning is here the value of shear is p so there is a positive p here i put a p here that's the point and it says if x is equal to l again the shear is p so if x is equal to l again it's the same p now looking at the actual graph if i start from here i have a samurai which is pushing me p upward so I'm at P. There's literally nothing else. So my shear goes la 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 constant. Because my applied load is zero, then this comes in now. V of X is equal to WX and DM DX is equal to VX. Whatever W is, V will be a higher order. If my W is zero, my V will be constant. That's why it will be a straight line. And then what happens? My P at the end will close it. I go up equal to P. Nothing happens until I reach to a point and I come down equal to that. So if my loading here is zero, there is nothing happening here this will be a constant 
because my shear is one order higher than my loaded. Let's look at the moment. It says if x is equal to zero, my moment is negative PL. We said for mo moment diagram, we consider top wise, top side as the negative. So I put negative PL. And it says if x equals to L, meaning at this point, my moment is zero. So I put a zero point here. Now, should I consider it like this? Should I go straight? Should I go like this? Depends on this. If the shear is constant, the moment is one order higher. So if this guy is constant, the moment will be linear. If this guy is zero, the shear was constant, one order higher. So if this is linear, then we draw it linearly. As you can see, a straight line going all the way down is on the negative side of my curve, so I put a negative sign. But does it make sense? Let's bring the balcony back. I have a P and it's pushing it down. If I put two face or an eye over here, it will be a sad face. Because it's a sad face, needs a hug, so it's hugging, and the moment is negative. On the other side, we said we always draw the moment for the tensile side. If I apply load, you see the spring on the top bit will be under tension, and the spring on the bottom bit will get closer to the wall, so it will be compression. So the top bit is under tension under such a loading case because the beam will be something like this. So this will be the tension. This will be the compression. So I'm drawing the moment for that side, which is on the top side.